hope you had an amazing weekend now we have three things to talk about today <laughs> Today is Monday and I'm sure in some parts of the world people are already in bed. Here it's midday. Um, we're going to be talking about some really interesting things today. I'll just tell you, basically we're going to be talking about what happens next if you've been refused a Canadian visa. So many people when they refuse a refusal, when they receive a refusal, my apologies, it feels like the whole world has come crumbling down. I I empathize but guess what that's not the end of the world sometimes refusals are as a result of errors so for example maybe the visa officer misidentified you maybe they thought you were someone who had applied two years ago and now you're applying and you did not declare that previous refusal it's happened before we've had a client actually very recently this year we had a client who a young boy right in high school what happened he applied and he was refused he was refused because the officer believed that he had applied about maybe say like five years ago five years ago that boy was just entering high school how would he do that by himself someone who doesn't even have his international passport with him his parents hold it so we knew that we had an idea that there was, uh, there, was there was an error somewhere and we dug deeper so what we did was we first of all requested and made an ATIP request to see the GCMS notes just to have an idea of, you know, what else it is that the officer is, is seeing, you know, that might not have been captured in the, in the refusal letter. So we made the request and we saw that the officer made mention of an application that was submitted specifically mentioning the year and that this student did not declare it in this application and so they felt he did not answer the questions truthfully well by god's grace we were able to put a reapplication forward and addressed it in the submission letter basically saying this student has never applied before it might be a case of a mistaken identity we had also gone on to request um the application package that they thought he might have put in but obviously because it's not him it wasn't his application nothing came out of that so we just got the application we submitted and the previous one that they had submitted by themselves in the package yes it's possible to request an application package that was submitted previously just to have an idea of you know what was put in you know just to be sure you know the documents all align but anyways going ahead so this was what happened and you know by the grace of god by the time we put the application together very well documented he got his approval and he was able to resume school at a top ranking university this year september so it's possible i'm not saying it's going to happen every time but it, it's possible that you know officers might make errors and you know, we're able to identify those situations and properly, you know, address it in submission letters. So, like I was saying, there are three main things you can do if you found yourself in a refusal, like in a, st in a state of, you know, receiving a refusal from, an, um, from the Canadian IRCC. You can either reapply, like we did for this student. You could request a reconsideration or you could go on for a judicial review now i will tell you what a judicial review is it is a process by which courts make sure that decisions of administrative bodies are fair reasonable and lawful i have to say it exactly as it is on the website that is what a judicial review is so basically you get a lawyer and rcic cannot do a judicial review for you it's important to take note of that so you get a lawyer and you engage their services they assess the application to see what the chances are and then they go to court and rcic cannot go to court we can do almost every other thing but we cannot represent you in a court we can represent you at tribunals 
we can represent you to IRCC and other government power status, but we cannot go to court for you. So, like I was saying, um, judicial review is another option, and it could be a bit expensive. It's good to take note of that. Um, the other option is a reapplication. So, a reapplication will entail you putting together the application together, making it stronger, including documents that you might not have included before, paying the application fees again. You may not have to pay for biometrics, but you would have to pay another you know, application fee. Um, in the case of a reconsideration, you don't have to pay for anything. And there are different ways you can make that request, but basically you, the, two main things that can allow you that can help you if you're going for a reconsideration now you have to look at the application thoroughly and be sure did you cite any factual error or legal error legal error could be for example when um the officer thinks that you should have a job offer when you're going for a study permit. That's just an example. That that I'm not sure that has happened before, but that's just an example of a legal error because a study permit, you don't you don't have any business needing a work a uh, job offer. Um, a factual error could be like the example I gave earlier, whereby the officer misidentified a student. You know, I thought that that was the same person who had put in an application previously that they were refused for. That could be a factual error so or them assuming that um your nationality you know maybe thinking you're from a different place from where you actually are um uh, it could be any it could be any of those things but basically if you see those type types of errors know that you have a very good chance of a successful request for reconsideration now i have a personal experience with reconsideration recently we had a client that we had applied for and the application was a pretty strong one but it came back with a refusal based on finances and we saw the application it was pretty strong the finances were so more than sufficient and um well you know we assessed it and we saw that it looked like a good case for a request for reconsideration so what we did was we included all the documents we were submitted previously and emphasized on and did like uh, drafted the letter the request for reconsideration letter drafted it and were very detailed we pretty much explained that these students this is their background this is what they're going to study this is the funds available for them these are the ties. These are the travel histories. Like we, we, we went really, really detailed just to help, you know, just to take the officer through a journey, trying to understand where these students are coming from, where they're going to, why they want to come and what they hope to do when they're done, like their future prospects. And we made mention of the finances because why would you refuse an application based on finance when the finance was enough so it must have been an error and maybe the officer did not have sufficient time to assess the whole application package well we were able to you know be as detailed as possible and to the glory of god within five days they did not reply me but within five days my client received a passport request so this means that it was a successful application. Now, some people will say that they hear back within three weeks, a month, but you know, this was my experience. I'm not saying it's always going to be that fast. Sometimes you may never even get a response. And in that instance, just reapply or, you know, explore the other option. But I just want to encourage you, if you have been refused a visa, do not be discouraged. Sometimes it's a mistake. And sometimes it's just maybe you also had the error. You did not include a document that you should have included. And, you know, when you come to us or any other our, uh, regulated Canadian immigration consultant, we'll be able to identify what was missing and how to put it right. So I want to encourage you. I know how heartbreaking it can be, the plans you might have already made, but getting a refusal is not the end of the world. 
it just means that something was missing or something wasn't clear just reapply it and see what happens and if you do not still get a positive response then i would usually take it as it's just probably not the time for you to come and there's nothing that stops you from trying again at a later time or if maybe if the reason genuinely was finances and you still don't have the finances wait build the finances and try again so i hope this video has been helpful i hope it's encouraging so that you don't feel it's the end of the world if you have received a refusal or you know someone who has please share this video i've tried to make it short and straight to the point share the video with people who you, who you know has been refused not many people share that kind of information but if you know anyone trying to apply and you think this information will be useful to them feel free to share if you like it please do like give us a thumbs up follow subscribe turn on the post notifications so you don't miss the next video as i said earlier i'm working working pretty hard towards giving you one video each week or two videos each week depending on what i can do but at the end of the day i want to be able to give you useful vital information that can help you on your journey to canada or if you're already in canada that can help you to be able to you know to live the kind of life you desire to live uh once again my name is pearl this is enter canada and i hope you stick along for the ride take care